This is the 11th section of the differentiation chapter, Pure 1, and this is about modelling with differentiation. So if you've got to this point, um, it means that you can do differentiation. What we need to be able to do now is apply this to real life problems. Now, the way that we apply it to real life problems is that we'll end up with some equations. OK, we need to put those equations together so that we end up with an equation with just one variable. OK, so let's write some steps down. So the first thing we need to do is to put uh, the equations together to get just one variable. OK, so just one thing that can change. So we don't want equations that have got radius and area and volume in all mixed up. We maybe just want a, um, an equation that just has radius in or just has a length in or just has a, a, an area in to allow us to differentiate it. Now, why would we differentiate? Because we want to find a maximum and minimum uh, values okay so differentiation differentiation allows us to find the minimum or maximum values okay because that's when for example when dy dx is zero okay that's what we call a, a stationary point on a curve on a graph and that happens when either it's a maximum or minimum or maybe when we've got what we call a point of inflection. But there are ways of showing whether what we've got is a maximum or minimum. So you see we've got a picture here of like this uh, water container and uh, V stands for the amount of volume uh, in the container. And that, that volume may be given like as pi r squared h, something like that. And uh, what we can do is we can differentiate the volume, uh, let's say with respect to time. Uh, so if you know if we end up with an equation which is v equals I don't know eight t squared uh, minus four t, then we can differentiate that and get dv dt. We get something like 16t minus 4 and we can use that to work out uh, at what time we have the maximum or minimum volume and what we do we maybe some set this up equal to zero and find the value or values of t when we get this minimum or maximum volume so for example here it will be 16t um equals four so that means t equals we need to be careful here it wouldn't be four it'd be a quarter of uh, four over 16. so that we can plug it back into here and work out what that volume is at that time but the key things for these questions is that you have maybe two equations that need to be put together there's normally a variable that you need to eliminate and then use differentiation to work out the maximum or minimum value. Given that the volume V of an expanding sphere is related to its radius by the formula uh, V equals four, four over three pi r cubed, which is the formula for a sphere, find the rate of change of the volume with respect to the radius at the instant when the radius is five centimeters. Now, if you're not sure what to do, just read the sentence. The sentence will um, tell you what to do. So find a rate of change of volume. So you could think of the letter D as meaning change, and it does mean like a small change. The change in volume with respect to, so you could think of this as meaning with respect to, or even over the change in volume with respect to the radius. In other words, this dr. So you could think of this, so this means change again, 
that statement actually means the change in volume over the change in radius. How does the volume change as the radius changes? Right now, we have V equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. So we um, differentiate this with respect to r. Now remember, pi is just like a number. It's a constant. So you treat it like a number. So when you do 4 thirds pi times by 3, you end up with 4 pi r squared, which is interesting because that's actually the formula for the surface area of a sphere, 4 pi r squared. So we've worked out what dv dr is, and we need to work out um, the rate of change when r is 5. So all we need to do is substitute in r equal to 5, and we end up with 4 pi times by 5 squared. So that'd be 25 times by 4, 100 pi. So we can leave it like that, or we could actually uh, multiply it out and give the answer to three significant figures. Now we need units. Now the easy way to find the units is to look at your what you've written down here. Now what's the units for volume? We're given that. So that's centimeters cubed. Okay, what's the uni units for the radius? Well, we're given that it's centimeters. And you can also think of this line as meaning per. So the units for our answers, it's always important you put the units, are centimeters cubed per centimeter. Yeah? So in other words, as the radius increases by a centimetre, the um, volume increases by 314 centimetres cubed only when R is 5. For different values of R, then the volume is going to be increasing or decreasing at a different rate. Okay, But if you look at the units that are given in question and look at the units you have here, that will tell you the units you get for your answer, centimetres cubed per centimetre. A large tank is in the shape of a cuboid, that's handy, to be made from 54 metres squared of, of sheet metal. Right, let's just write these things down or highlight them. So cuboid, we got 54 metres cubed of sheet metal. The tank has a horizontal base and no top. OK, so it's going to look uh, something like this. Yeah, so it's empty inside. Yeah, so I guess it looks something like that. Yeah, so an empty um, box with no top on it. The height of the tank is X centimetres or X metres. The two opposite vertical faces are squares show that the volume V of the tank is given by 18x minus 2 thirds x cubed. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is to draw a sketch of it, probably a little bit a bigger sketch than what I did here. Okay, so this is going to be my tank here. Now the two opposite phases are meant to be square. OK, so I'll try and make them uh, as square as I can. Let's do a bit rectangular. Um, horizontal base, no top. The height of the tank is X centimetres. So this is X here. So if these are squares, that means that this length is also X. Um, but we're not given the width of the tank. OK, I'm going to use a different letter for the width. Let me use W for the width of the tank. And this is where I'm going to be using the, um, the surface area as well to help me. Now, the first thing is that the volume of this tank is going to be given by X times X times W. Yeah, it's dimensions multiplied together. So X squared times W. Now, there's no W or any other letter in my formula. 
So this is where I use the um, surface area. Now basically I am told that I have 54 meters cubed of sheet metal has made this box. So the surface area is 54 meters cubed. Now these dimensions are in meters. So um, what's that going to be? Well, let's work out. Let's try and color it in. So this face here and this face here, their areas are x squared. So the two end faces are going to be two x squared. X squared for one face, x squared for the other face. Okay, let's do the faces at the front. So this one and the back. So this face and the one at the back. All right, so these faces, um, their area is WX or XW, and there's two of those. So I've got two um, WX for the area of the front face and the back face, okay? And the last face, the one at the bottom, that's the one I can't see, that's going to measure W by X. There's only one of those, so WX. That gives the surface area. I know that surface area is 54. Now, what do we want to do? We basically want to make W the subject. And when we've made W the subject, we can put it in here and get rid of that W or whatever letter we've used for the width. Right, so um, that means putting together, first of all, the two W, X, plus wx so if i put these together that gives me 3wx let's write that down 3wx then we'll take away 2x squared from both sides um, because we want uh, w as the formula the next step would be to divide both sides by 3x so i will have 54 well, let's write w equals 54 minus 2x squared over 3x. Now I could write that as 54 over 3 is 18. So 18 over x minus, that will be 2 thirds x. Yeah, so if I split that fraction up, 54 over 3 is 18, so the 18 over x, and then 2 thirds, one of the x cancels down, so we got 2 thirds x, that is w. So that is going to go into this equation here, so I can eliminate w. So my volume is equal to x squared times by this 18 over x, minus two thirds x and if we work that out that will give us 18 x minus two thirds x cubed so we've proved it as required okay by writing two equations and eliminating one of their variables okay because we've got all the information we need part b Given that x can vary, use differentiation to find the maximum or minimum volume of v. So we've got our equation with one variable. To find out the maximum, maximum or minimum value, we do dv dx. So that means differentiating this 18x minus 2 thirds x cubed. So that will just be 18 when we differentiate 18x then the uh, minus 2 thirds x, if we differentiate that, um, we will end up with 2x minus 2x squared. The minimum or maximum volume will occur. So min or max is going to occur when dv dx equals 0, when we've got that stationary point on our curve. In other words, when 
18 minus 2x squared equals 0. So that will give us 2x squared equals 18, um, which is x squared equals 9. So x is plus or minus 3. But since we can't have a negative length, x will be 3. Now, since we want to find the volume, we're going to take that x equals 3 and put it into the formula for the volume. So that volume is going to be 18 times by 3 minus 2 thirds times by 3 cubed. So let's do that. Uh, 18 times by 3 minus 2 thirds times by 3 cubed. And we get 36. So 36 um, meters cubed is going to be either the maximum or minimum volume. Part C justify that the, the value found in part V is a, uh, a maximum. So the way that we do that, we differentiate a second time. So d squared V, this is part C here d squared v over dx squared. We differentiate a second time. That will just leave us with negative 4x. We put the value of x in. And when we do that, we get negative 12. Now, whenever you get a value which is negative, it means you found a maximum. So this is a maximum volume since this, this second derivative is less than zero. So less than zero means you found a maximum. Greater than zero means you found a minimum. OK, you should now be able to do exercise 12K on pages 281. So just to quickly recap. Um, it's all about eliminating a variable using your algebraic skills, differentiating to find either a maximum or a minimum. And if you want to prove that you've got a maximum or a minimum, then the second derivative will help you do that derivative. And if the second derivative is greater than zero, once you put that value of x in, you have found a minimum. And if it's less than zero, you have found a maximum.